G'day there guys, Marky here, and welcome back to another episode of r slash relationship advice. Apologies for disappearing for two weeks, but I'm back now, so how's it going? Anyway, I've started live streaming, as you'll see in the next video after this one, so if you're curious, I'll be live streaming every now and then, and if you want to catch those live streams, uh, click the bell notifications on the, I don't know, subscribe tab or something like that, and you'll be notified as soon as I go live. Otherwise, you can just watch the videos I post about it, and you don't have to miss them. You'll still get to see what I'm reading about. Anyway, with that said, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn to the barbie. Let's get right into today's story. Thanks. Posted by user Drawing OK6066, titled, Am I the asshole for reacting wrong to my brother's engagement? Sorry if this is kind of all over the place. So on Sunday, I, 19 female, learned on a Zoom call with my family that my brother Harry, 22 male, had just gotten engaged to his girlfriend Jessica, 20 female. When Harry told us, everyone but me was pretty enthusiastic, but I just kinda sighed and said nothing. Harry didn't display any reaction towards my admittedly lukewarm reaction, but afterwards my mum called me and told me that I was rude for not being excited. She said that I needed to respect all members of the family, including Jessica, and that I needed to reconsider my behavior if I wanted to be invited to our vacation in the spring. Harry and I were really close growing up. Since he, and then I, started college, we've been less close, but him and I still talk every week or two. Harry and Jessica have been together for around two years now. Here is where it gets complicated. I knew Jessica back in high school, and she was not what you would call a kind soul. She had a particularly nasty streak. She would not pay attention during class, and always tried to cheat off of other people's homework, and I assume got away with it. She tried semi-successfully to steal my boyfriend. She bullied one of my best friends, calling her fat, among other things. This bullying worsened, if not caused altogether, her eating disorder, and it's something that I've never been able to forgive or forget. She's just one of those people who would just mess around with other people's lives like it's a game and not something that she is invested in. About six months ago, I had a heart-to-heart -heart with Harry about Jessica. I laid out my concerns and the history of her behavior, hoping that it might make him reconsider or at least think deeply about their relationship. He said he would consider what I'd said, but didn't continue with the conversation much more. Since then, we talked regularly as usual, and things seemed more normal between us. He didn't talk about Jessica often, but he didn't hide their relationship either. I really was happy it sounded like it might be dying off though. I had no idea he was getting engaged to her until he announced it. I don't know if he's been telling other people in the family besides me, or if it really was just an abrupt decision. To make it worse, I'm worried that he told Jessica about our conversation six months ago. In her announcement on Facebook, annoying ring on hand photograph in tow, she wrote something like, I know not everyone in our family is supportive, but we have each other, and that is what matters. So he ignored my warning, and he told her all about it. Part of me wonders if I should just swallow my feelings for the sake of family harmony, but another part of me feels like I'd be betraying my old friend, my own values, and my brother by pretending to be happy about this engagement. And I'm bad at holding back my truth. So am I the asshole for feeling upset and possibly wanting to voice my concerns again, even though it might cause friction in my family? Or should I just keep my feelings to myself and let Harry make his own decisions and mistakes? I just feel like there's nobody who I can talk to about this that will really understand. Edits. Okay, thanks for all the responses, people. I will take some advice. Talk to your mum and explain exactly what it is that Jessica has done and try to make her understand. Talk to Harry about our conversation before and find out how much of it he shared with Jessica and how she responded to what I said. Potentially talk to Jessica and seek therapy. I'm really not in a position to go no contact with my family and I still do want them in my life. I might post an update, but also it seems like the rules are kind of strict on that, which is fair. Message me or something if you want to hear what happens. In the comments, I am Irene says, quotes, Afterwards, my mum called me and told me that I was rude for not being excited. No, you weren't. You just weren't excited. You're entitled to your own feelings. 
quotes, and that I need to reconsider my behavior if I want to be invited to our vacation in the spring. Oh, I see. So if you don't react the way that your mother wants you to react, she'll exclude you from family events. Got it. That's messed up. I wouldn't worry too much if Jessica is aware of your conversation with your brother. If she is, at least she knows that you're wary, and rightly so. You are not the asshole for feeling the way you do for your reaction to the news. Your mother is a bit of an asshole though. That's some class A manipulation that she's using. Time will tell if things work out for your brother and Jessica or not, but as long as you're polite without compromising your personal values, things should be fine. If she decides to get nasty, don't hide your experience of it or your feelings about it, but also know that very often people outgrow their immature tendencies and she could become a very decent person. This whole situation reminds me of that movie, You Again, lol. And OP replies, thank you. To be honest, I'm kind of used to this kind of thing from my mother. She likes to hold stuff over our heads. One time, my siblings and I all got forced to miss a play that we were going to see because we weren't actually excited for it, even though I had been learning all about it and was really looking forward to it. Part of me wonders if she just didn't want to spend the money. I'm not sure that's what's going on here, though. I truly do hope that she's either outgrown it or Harry sees her nasty side before the wedding. Foof Tato replies, so in other words, your mother is passive-aggressive, manipulative, and abusive, and Harry is marrying someone exactly like your mother because it's what he's used to. Got it. My advice to you is to be polite, but form a healthy life outside of your family and try to stay away and as much as you can and not let them control you. It's kind of a shit show, as you can see. Can you do therapy? That would honestly be great for you. Not because there's anything wrong with you, but because there is clearly a lot wrong with them, and therapy would help you navigate how to deal with how cruel they are. Because what your mother did when you were kids with that play was honestly very cruel, and I bet you have a lot more stories like that, and it will help you deal with issues that come up as Jessica integrates herself into the family and she and her mother power struggle as to who is going to be the meanest. Because there are going to be struggles, let me tell you. And you're going to be forced to pick sides from one to the other. And if you don't pick right, there is going to be drama. Can you, like, move across the country or something? <laughs> Honestly, let your mother be nasty about you not going on the family vacation. Why would you even want to? It sounds like a nightmare. Tell her you can't get off of work or have too much schoolwork or something. There's no such thing as a free family vacation if you know what I mean. OP replies, <laughs> Eh, maybe you're right and I should do therapy. I had never thought about how Jessica is kind of like a worse version of my mum when it comes to manipulation. Maybe that's a thing. And I guess I don't totally need my family, but I do want that. Fortunately, maybe, the moving across the country thing is already done, I went out of state for college while Harry and the rest of my family still live in our home city. Parsimonious Salad says, Not the asshole. Sadly, following her Facebook post, you know you still cannot trust Jessica, and you probably need to be more cautious with what you share with Harry, as that goes to the both of them. Edit, and don't voice your concerns again. He's made his choice. But you don't have to pretend to be enthusiastic either. OP says, I'm so bad at holding my tongue, but thank you. It's time to learn then. He's made his choice. He heard you out the first time. Unless you want to nuke your relationship with them, don't say anything again. You've said your piece, and he knows. What you have to do now is decide what kind of relationship you want with him going forwards. I would assume for now, unless something strongly indicates otherwise, that he will make her his priority. Tread carefully, and I do wish you luck. I know how hard this can be. I was in a similar situation many years ago. Edit to add, learning to hold your tongue is also a skill that will serve you well in life. It's important to know when to speak up and out, and when not to. Equally as important is how to speak up when the situation calls for it. You already voiced your concerns. He heard what you had to say and made his own choice. Like it or not, our family members are free to make their own decisions regardless of whether or not we like those decisions. You are not the asshole for having valid concerns and voicing them. You would be an asshole if you did it again though. Let him live his life. 
You don't have to pretend to love Jessica despite what your mum says. You're allowed to have your own opinion. But you also do have to respect the decision that your brother has made for himself. Info. When was the last time that you talked to Jessica? Lots of people who are assholes during high schools change immensely during college or thereafter. OP says, I haven't talked to her in at least two years, aside from kind of saying hello over speakerphone. But from her social media, I really don't think that she's changed. She's acting like an asshole in general and a pick me towards my brother. And now on to the updates. So a lot of people commented and sent me messages asking for an update to my previous post about my unenthusiastic reaction to my brother's engagement announcement. Well, here it is. After reading people's replies, it sounds like the predominant opinion was that while I might not have been the asshole immediately, I would become one if I kept pushing too hard against my brother's relationship. And I really don't want Harry to think that I don't support him or to not talk to me about personal relationship matters. So I pretty much had decided to keep quiet and just go along with whatever Harry wanted. On Tuesday, he messaged me asking if I wanted to be a bridesmaid in Jessica's wedding party or a groomsmaid in his wedding party. After a little bit of back and forth, it became clear that he asked me because he knew that I wasn't totally keen on Jessica but still wanted me involved with the wedding. I was trying to be supportive, so I said that it would be great to get to know Jessica better by being a bridesmaid, though I wasn't exactly looking forward to the experience. I admit though, I had a little bit of an ulterior motive. From what I know of Jessica, she completely changes how she acts based on who she's around, which is how she manipulated Harry into proposing of course. I thought that, just maybe, if I could show Harry how Jessica acts with her girls, he might reconsider his decision to marry her. Anyway, on Thursday, I got added to a Facebook messenger chat named Brilliant Bridal Bitches, wherein Jessica laid out her ground rules for being in the bridal party. They are almost verbatim. 1. Participation in my bridal party is not just an honor, it's an investment. Be prepared to spend at least $1,000 on attire and accessories alone. I can make exceptions, but only if you ask me. 2. I alone will dictate the narrative of my wedding on social media. Any premature posts, especially unflattering photos of me, will result in immediate expulsion. 3. Your weight will be monitored weekly. Anyone not fitting into their dress will be kindly asked to step down. This wedding will look picture perfect, and I can't have you ruining the aesthetics. 4. From now until the wedding, I expect you to be on call 24-7. Wedding emergencies are real, and your commitment to solving them will be a true test of your friendship. 5. You will fund and organize a lavish bachelorette party in my honor. Think exotic destination, luxury accommodations, and Instagram-worthy moments. 6. You will have fun. Not just for your sake, but for me as well. Upon reading this, I just burst out laughing. Screenshot, click. I think I might be able to convince Harry not to marry Jessica after all. I'm just deciding now if I should play it cool and act like the rules are normal, but bring it up with Harry, or maybe show my mother because I know that it would make her flip and almost certainly forgive me for sighing when Harry told us about the engagement. In the comments, Caspian4136 says, Not the asshole. An investment? In what exactly? And what's the return on that investment, lol? The return on the investment is the very grand honor of being in her bridesmaid party. It's very selective, don't you know? Okay, if you want to play dirty, don't go to your mother and like, Aha, see? I told you. Go to her crying and worried. A thousand dollars for clothes and accessories? Where are you going to come up with that kind of money? And why should you lose all of that money for a party? Remember, if you ask your parents to help pay for things, that's at least a thousand dollars out of their own pockets. OP says, that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> ask her to lend me some money. She'll ask why, and I'll tell her. And don't forget additional money for her lavish bachelorette party. My dear Reddit friend, this reads like a bad rom-com where Julia Roberts tries to break up Cameron Diaz and Dylan McDermott. I respectfully submit that you should go back to your brother and take him up on being a groomsmaid. 
even Julia had trouble being an undercover villain, I think that you should talk to your brother, take the other position, and tell him that you love him and support him no matter what. He's a big boy. This is definitely a mistake, but it's his life his mistake to make, and no matter what you decide, I wish you joy and happiness, and your family too. I agree. Go the low maintenance route. I don't think his mind will change that easily anyhow. And now onto update 2. Thanks for all the advice and support from my whole situation with my brother getting engaged to an incredibly annoying former bully who has been manipulating him. I'm posting an update since a lot of people asked. I'm gonna have to be a bit of a disappointment though. After my last post, a lot of people were suggesting that I should be tricky and go to my mother and ask to borrow money and make the appropriate investment for being in Jessica's bridal party. I thought about that, but realized that it would be a little bit too over the top. So instead, I just sent her a screenshot of Jessica's rules and a couple of other insane things that she posted in the group chat to Harry and asked for his advice. Telling him, I know I said that I wanted to join the bridal party to get to know Jessica better, but I'm worried it might not actually be good for me. Do you think I could bail and join your party instead? He called me instead of texting back and definitely sounded pretty surprised by what I showed him. I'm certain that the side of Jessica shown in those rules and other messages, including a new one saying that if your BMI is over 22, you are out of the wedding, in the group chat, is not the side of herself that she showed to him. We had a good hour or so of conversation about what things were like between the two of them, and I learned a lot about where he was coming from. From what he told me, it sounds like getting married was really Jessica's idea. She had been going through some tough times lately, and apparently has struggled with depression in recent years. She's always wanted this perfect wedding and perfect married life, and she told him that it would make her feel better and fix all of her issues if he proposed. So Harry, being the good person that he is, did it. He took pity on her, even though he didn't really feel ready yet. He says he doesn't regret it though. She has been so much happier since the proposal he said, and he's no longer worried about her running away or harming herself or worse. That said, he said he was still shocked by what she posted to her girls and said he didn't know what to do next. I told him I'm worried about him and his future if he stays with Jessica and goes through with the marriage. He thanked me and then hung up. He still sounded pretty shaken. The next day, he asked me to call him, so I do that. He explains to me that everything was okay, and he talked to Jessica about the whole situation. She told him that it was just a joke, and the kind of thing that her friends are used to sending in their messages. Apparently, she apologized and said that it was her fault for not making sure that I was on her level. Harry's words trying to quote Jessica for what it's worth. I'm pretty skeptical of that though. She seemed serious to me. She also seemed serious when she messaged me privately, you are on thin ice. She also sent another message in the main group chat saying, this is all of y'all's reminder that I need your full support and any undermining of my and my wedding will have serious consequences. So that's where things stand. I told Harry that I don't really believe that it was a joke and I believe that Jessica is trying to control him just like she's trying to control her bridesmaids. He just said that he's in a difficult situation, she is stressed out, and he trusts her. So that's where things stand. Apparently, I'm still in the darn bridal party, dress stuff is happening in the next week or two, and I really thought Harry would get to his senses, but apparently not yet. Now I need to decide what the heck to do next. In the comments, AmazingMain9963 says, Lovesick fools tend to be blind, and I guess he's one of them. And OP says, I guess so, though I think he might also feel a little trapped, but that could just also be something that he said for my benefit. I think it's important that you talk to him again. Show him the thin ice message, the bridal chats, tell him you think that she's a horrible person, but you love him and you'll be there for him no matter what, just in case she's as bad as I think she is, and starts to cut your family off and isolate him. And OP replies, you're probably right. Hello children, and welcome to Mr. Robinson's Neighborhood. Today, we have a new special word for you. It's gaslighting. I know it's a long word, but let's all try to say it together. Do you think we could try that? Holy crap, document, document, document. I certainly hope that you took a screenshot of that thin ice comment. 
This is absolutely going to be a dumpster fire of a wedding, and you are going to catch a lot of blame when you don't subscribe to the drama that she's going to create. From where I sit, since drama is inevitable, I'd seriously be considering dropping out entirely and going as a guest only to get the drama out of the way now instead of later and closer to the actual fiasco of a wedding that she is planning. If you don't, I would expect a full court press to separate you and your brother through lies and manipulation. OP says, I guess maybe, but I'm worried that the wedding is more likely to actually happen if I stay out of things, and for Harry's sake, I really don't want it to get to that. Though I am maybe taking some personal risks by inserting myself into all of this. I did screenshot the message from her. Nothing you do or say will matter if your bro is determined to marry Jessica. Bow out of the bridesmaid fiasco, don't be a grooms person, say nothing about Jessica to anyone, positive or negative. Grey rock the woman, make her reveal herself to all and sundry, but stay out of it. This is the best advice. I don't know why people aren't encouraging OP to grey rock everyone. Be pleasant enough not to be suspicious, but detached. If OP tries to change her brother's mind or make him slash the family see the light, it's only going to give Jessica ammunition and sabotage OP's reputation in the family. Ask me how I know. It was not a joke because she threatened you with, you were on thin ice. I would not be surprised if she tries to isolate him from you after the marriage. Your brother is not believing you, nor does he see the red flags his beloved Jessica is waving. Well, you did your best. I just hope that it doesn't take years to find out that she is not the person she pretended to be. It's a sad story. Yes, she's definitely trying to isolate OP from his family after they're married. And OP says, I'm so scared of that. I would just back out and stay away. There's nothing she can do until he comes to his senses, but I would not let her run over me. There's really nothing she can do in this situation except for letting it run its course. Yeah, it's one of those situations where you want to help, but you have to protect your own peace. Honestly, I would bow out of the whole wedding. Bro, I love you, but I think you're making a mistake. Marrying someone when you're not ready to just to make them happy is a shaky foundation for a lifelong commitment. I'm here for you, but I cannot in good faith participate in this wedding. Honestly, I can't imagine a world where she breaks up his relationship and comes out smelling like roses. She needs to just support her brother and be there when it falls apart. Our next post is by user electronichurt561 titled Am I the asshole here for dumping my girlfriend after moving in with her? I, 25 male, moved in with my girlfriend, 24 female, of 4 years, 3 weeks ago. She chose the place, and although her name is on the lease, I paid half of the deposit and paid the first month of rent as she couldn't afford it. I also paid the first month of bills. She works part-time and has some savings she used to furnish the place according to her taste, despite my objections. I felt that she overspent, and the money could have been better spent on other things. She had a friend over on Monday when I came home. She had ordered food, and as I normally come home from work at 5, she was surprised to see me there an hour earlier. They were a little bit drunk, and one of her friends made strange comments, which I thought nothing of due to the alcohol as I went to the bathroom to shower. When I came out from the shower, her other friends and sister was quoting my poetry that I had written to my girlfriend, and was quite handsy. I found it odd and asked her where she'd heard that. She goes, we just read your love letters to her before watching a movie. My girlfriend was laughing with them. Her sister made a remark about how she wanted me to do her the way that I do her sister, because she had never felt that way. I was furious, but due to her drunkenness, thought that it was impossible to talk to her. I then left for my mother's house. On Tuesday, she called me 17 times, but I ignored it. She also sent many texts wanting to know why I wasn't home. On Wednesday, I told her in person how hurt I was from her sharing my intimate letters with her friends, and for oversharing what we do in private. She said relax, it was a joke, and nobody got hurt. She said the girls were impressed with me, and that's why they got a little handsy. She said once I gave her the letters, they were hers to share with whom she pleased. So I told her that I'm my own person and can make the decision to not share more of myself with her. Today she came to my mother's apologizing. 
She wanted me to come back and talk it out with her. I told her no, that we were through. She wouldn't leave, so I drove to my father's place where I am now. She keeps texting me and telling me that I should be ashamed of myself for leaving her like that. She got her friends and sister to apologize to me, and they told me to quit playing games and go home now that they had apologized. I told them that I was home, and that as my name was not on the lease, and I wasn't respected as an equal in her home, I no longer wanted to be with her. Luckily for me, I hadn't moved most of my stuff there. She kept phoning and texting, and I blocked her. She then made a mutual male friend of ours contact me and tell me that I was being a bitch about it, so I blocked him too. Then his girlfriend texted me and told me not to take things out of proportion. I am almost certain that I did the right thing, but maybe I should talk it out with her before cutting all contacts. In the comments, quote, nobody got hurt. Odd that she said that after you explicitly said that it hurt you. Also, don't you love when people rope their friends into internal relationship disputes? Personally, I wouldn't want to sign up for a life of this, so not the asshole. Nah, she was just being honest. She just thinks that OP is nobody to her. That she called him a beer while trying to win him back was the final nail in the coffin. She thought that a bloke calling him an emasculating name would shame him into coming back. Boy, did sis read that wrong. OP deserves better than someone who thinks getting your boyfriend groped by your drunk friends is a fun joke. Not the asshole. Can you imagine what this situation would be viewed as if this was a guy treating a girl this way? She comes home with him and his friends are drunk. They've gone through her intimate stuff that she's given him. He talks to them about their sex lives and they all come up to her and start being handy with her and telling her how great she is and to screw them in the same way then later on call her and apologize to her, to then tell her that she's being too sensitive and a B-I-T-C-H for not coming back. Yeah, that is quite the scene you just laid out. Totally disgusting, whether you're male or female. It's sad to see how difficult it is for the masses to call out female sexual predators the way they do the males. Quote, her name is on the lease that I paid half of the deposit and paid the first month of rent as she couldn't afford it. Well... I found your mistake right here. Also, not the asshole for breaking up with someone who makes fun of you with her friends. I actually think the first mistake was, she works part-time and has some savings. Was this not a red flag that she couldn't afford rent? And that right there is the reason that she wants him to come home. She clearly doesn't respect him at all. She needs him to pay the rent. As someone else said, if the positions had been reversed, she would have been screaming the place down and demanding that he cut his friends out of his life. She got what she deserves. Maybe one of those wonderful friends or her sister can move in and help her out. And now, on to the updates. After reading a lot of the advice here and talking it out with my family and friends, it seems that it's best to not continue my relationship. I haven't contacted her directly, but I went with my brother and my friend while she visits her parents. It's a pre-booked trip. I collected my things and gave my brother the key to give her on Friday evening. She wouldn't take it from him as she wanted me to return it. My brother told her that there was zero chance of that happening because of the TikTok post that she had on her account going into more details about what was in the letters from me, including her mentioning my sister by name and her miscarriages. This forced my sister to tell my mother about it, even though it brought up a lot of the trauma for her. At the moment, my sister is not talking to me because she felt that I shouldn't have shared that with anyone. I agree. It was a violation on my part, even though I was looking for emotional support from my girlfriend. My ex took down the post in hopes of getting me to meet with her. When she realized that wouldn't happen, she put up another one telling her side of the story. There were several parts, and in it, she was looking for the letters to show her followers. But I knew where she kept them and took them while I went to collect my stuff. I burnt all of them. I won't be writing letters to any new romantic partners anytime soon. Her sister has been to my mother's a few times trying to get me to help out with the rent, as according to my ex's reasoning, if I hadn't agreed to pay for the rent, she wouldn't have overspent on setting up her home the way that she wanted. Even if she sells the stuff, she won't get the original price for it, so she feels as though it's my fault for making her lose money. She did contact the landlord. 
filmed for her TikTok viewers while she was on the phone to him, and he denied her breaking the lease without penalties. She has to pay the remainder of the months. I asked her for my deposit through my friend while he was on the loudspeaker to her so I could hear her side without having to speak, knowing full well that I wouldn't get my part, but at least he tried. She called him a lot of names, then phoned him back and apologized because she wanted him to tell me to phone her so that she could straighten out the misunderstanding and we could get back together. She has now taken down all of the posts about me. Don't know if she'll upload them again once it dawns on her that we are through. She phoned my brother again to make me speak to her so she could explain, and he met her a few hours ago. He finally gave her the key as she was told either she could take it or we would return it to the landlord. He picked up a call from her an hour after she dropped off the keys. She wanted to talk to me, and she wanted me to forgive her as she had seen how she had made a mistake and that it wouldn't happen again. She wanted me to return the love letters, but my brother told her that they were burnt. She had a go at him, so my brother cut her off. She phoned back, more apologetic, and said what she had to do to make me go back. He asked her if she would be okay with me sharing her nudes and clip that she had sent me with my male friends. He asked her this without okaying it with me first. She said she wouldn't be okay with it. I guess the double standard has completely turned me off, as she told my brother that if you receive something through a romantic relationship, then it stays between four eyes. It's not that she doesn't understand that what she did is wrong, it's that she expects me to be okay with it, as in her mind, her feelings matter more in the relationship. She also thinks that since I'm taller and bigger than her, I shouldn't have felt threatened by her friends or sisters, as I was not really in harm's way. He then blocked her as she phoned him several times over and over and left him crying messages and then some angry messages to delete her nudes. Her sister left an angry message with the friend that helped me with asking for the deposit and she threatened him that if I ever leaked her nudes, I would not live to regret it. She told him to pass on the message to me and that there is something she is very insecure about sharing about her body and she doesn't want me to share that without her consent. I'm getting a new number as I can do so with my current payment plan. I'm going forward from this and hoping that I make better decisions in the future. Thank you to all that helped me with good advice. In the comments, hey man, just a heads up, if you call your provider and tell them that you're getting harassing phone calls, they'll typically change your number for free. Man, I hope you recorded her friend's death threat saying that you will not live if you leak her nudes. Her double standards and that of her sister are seriously disgusting. You got rid of a cancer in your life, bro. Forward and upward. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Please don't stop being the sweet, emotionally available man that you are. Don't let a few hood rats ruin it for the rest of women. You are going to find someone that appreciates your effort and keeps your heart safe. Good luck, and for goodness sakes, tell your family to stop taking her calls. OP replies, They have already blocked her, but her sister and her turned up at my mother's. My mother won't open the door to them anymore, as she finds it quite harassing. OP on his sister says, I gave her a real apology. She accepted it, but needs a small break from me to get her thoughts sorted out. She said I can still pick up my niece when I want to. Don't worry about me and my sister, we're okay. She's more upset about it making it to TikTok. This is so crappy. The girl had herself a wonderful human and completely destroyed any chance of a future. OP's a champ though, but I think he needs to see about a restraining order since they're threatening him. Right? It was amazing how many times she cycled through doing asshole stuff, apologize, demand forgiveness, do more asshole stuff when you still don't get your way, without ever really grokking what the actual problem was. How deeply unfortunate him and future partners are robbed of intimate love letters because she's a twat. I really hope he finds himself someone who sends him letters to restore this love language for him. Me and my boyfriend write to each other sometimes, even though we live together. It can be so precious. Quote, she got her friends and sister to apologize to me, and they told me to quit playing games and go home now that they had apologized. An apology is only genuine if A, it comes with no strings attached, and B, the person who's apologizing truly intends to change their behavior. Not sure what girlfriend and company think they're accomplishing here. That is such a monumental breach of privacy. 
One of the key elements of a strong partnership is knowing that you have full and total intimate privacy to disclose your innermost feelings and troubles to your partner without fear of having them shared outside of the relationship. The people who continually blow up their relationship because they cannot physically stop themselves from oversharing with followers will never cease to amaze me. Like, wake up. OP is her real life, paying her real rent, and that's her sister-in-law who went through real trauma, but X can't stop seeking validation. I don't get people who are wrong and double down and go even harder. What got me in trouble? Oversharing? Better do some more of that. Anyway guys, that's where I'm going to end today's episode. I do hope you enjoyed. If you did, let me know what you thought about it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.